Given the diagram, we're asked to solve for the flow rate along each street. And then number two, if the road whose flow is Z is closed, what is the minimum value for the flow Y? At that value, what is the flow along the other streets? We will first solve the general flow rate problem using the junction rule, which states that at each junction, the total flow in must equal the total flow out. The direction of the flow is indicated by the arrows. Let's set this up on the next slide. We have a total of four intersections. And let's go ahead and number these to keep things organized. Intersection one, two, three, and four. At each intersection, we'll have an equation by setting the flow in equal to the flow out. Once we have our equations, we will solve the system of equations to solve the flow rate problem. So again, because we have four intersections, we will have four equations. Looking at intersection one, we have one flow in and two flows out. 80 is the inflow and V plus Z is the outflow. This gives us the equation 80 equals V plus Z. Looking at intersection two, we have two inflows and two outflows. The inflow is Y plus Z and the outflow is X plus 95. This gives us the equation y plus z equals x plus 95. For intersection three, there are three inflows and only one outflow. The inflow is v plus w plus 115, and the outflow is y. This gives us the equation v plus w plus 115 equals y. At intersection four, we have one inflow and two outflows. The equation is x equals w plus 100. The next step is to write all the equations in standard form so that we can set up an augmented matrix and then write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form, which means you need the variables on the left and the constants on the right. And let's also write all the variables in alphabetical order so that it'll make it easier to write the augmented matrix. For the first equation, we can just reverse the order and write the equation as V plus Z equals 80. For the second equation, we subtract X on both sides, which gives us negative X plus Y plus Z equals 95. For the second equation, we subtract Y on both sides and also subtract 115 on both sides, which gives us V plus W minus Y equals negative 115. And for the second and for the last equation, we subtract W on both sides, which gives us negative W plus X equals 100. From here, we set up an augmented matrix. Because we have four equations and five unknowns, we will have a four by six augmented matrix. To save some time, I've already set a lot of this up. To make sure we set up the augmented matrix correctly, I highly recommend labeling each column. We have V, W, X, Y, Z for the first five columns in alphabetical order, and then we have the constant column as the sixth column. So the first equation of V plus Z equals 80. The coefficient of V is one. The coefficients of W, X, and Y are all zero. The coefficient of Z is one, and the constant is 80. For the second equation of negative X plus Y plus Z equals 95, the coefficients of V and W are zero. Coefficient of X is negative one. The coefficients of Y and Z are both one, and the constant is 95. For the third equation, the coefficient of V and W are both one. The coefficient of X is zero. The coefficient of Y is negative one. The coefficient of Z is zero, and the constant is negative 115. And for the final equation, the coefficient of V is zero. The coefficient of W is negative one. The coefficient of x is one. The coefficients of y and z are both zero, and the constant is 100. The next step is to write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form, which I've already done here on the right. And now we write the equations for each row. The first row indicates that v plus z equals 80. The second row indicates that w minus y minus z equals negative 195. The third row indicates that x minus y minus z equals negative 95, and notice how in the fourth row we have a row of zeros. Let's pause here for a moment and identify the pivots. Because the augmented matrix is in reduced row echelon form, 
the first non-zero entry of each row indicate the pivots. We have a pivot in row one, column one, row two, column two, and row three, column three, which means the first three columns are the pivot columns, and the variables v, w, and x are the basic variables. The remaining two variables are the free variables. So the free variables are y and z. And therefore, we also include the equations y equals y and z equals z. Because y and z are the free variables, we now need to express v, w, and x in terms of y and z. So for the first equation, we subtract z on both sides. For the second equation, we add y to both sides and add z to both sides. For the third equation, we again add y to both sides and add z to both sides, giving us our final solution to the flow rate problem. So going back to the first slide, we now know the solution to the flow rate problem. However, there are some restrictions. All the flow rates must be non-negative. Looking at the first equation of v equals 80 minus z, z must be less than or equal to 80 in order for v to be non-negative. And therefore, that is a restriction on z. z must be less than or equal to 80. And then taking a look at the second equation, notice the sum of y and z must be greater than or equal to positive 195 in order for w to be non-negative. So we also need to state that y plus z must be greater than or equal to 195. And now let's take a look at number two. Number two says if the road whose flow is z is closed, what is the minimum value for the flow y? At that value, what is the flow along the other streets? So for number two, we are given that z must equal zero. So if z is equal to zero, we can rewrite some of these equations. We can write the first equation as just v equals 80. w is equal to negative 195 plus y plus zero, or just negative 195 plus y. And x is equal to negative 95 plus y plus zero, or just negative 95 plus y. And y is still equal to y. So the question now is, what is the minimum value for the flow y? Well, again, all the flow rates must be non-negative. And since negative 195 is less than negative 95, we'll use the equation for w and state that negative 195 plus y must be greater than or equal to zero. To solve for y, we add 195 to both sides, which gives us y must be greater than or equal to 195. And therefore, the minimum value for a y would be 195. That's the smallest value that y can be so that w is still non-negative. The reason we didn't use the equation x equals negative 95 plus y here, because if we set negative 95 plus y greater than or equal to zero, we would get y greater than or equal to 95, which does not satisfy the condition so that the flow rate for w is non-negative. And then to finish this problem, when y is equal to the minimum of 195, we have v equals 80. We have w equals negative 195 plus 195, which is zero. We have x equals negative 95 plus 195, which is 100. And we have y equals 195. And we know that z is equal to zero because that was the given condition. To finish the problem, the value of v is 80, the value for w is zero, and the value for x is 100. Again, when z is zero and y is equal to 195. I hope you found this helpful.